sort of thing. So very, very interesting, and I'm excited to see all of you with such enthusiasm. And it reminds me of my older days, younger days. Now I can't, I'll uh, just speak about uh, something of my experience in this room. But he he's starting this straight away with some interaction, so maybe I think we would go with that interaction. Sure, sure, things. as you say, as you please. No, 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 no fixed format so for you. It is a free class. Yeah. yeah, take it your own way. Yeah, I'll just try to recall as briefly as possible because you may like to have questions on those. Very short and brief story is when I joined this room, we were about something like 23 people uh, during the year 1966. This includes Satras Arabai, who was the chairman of the <coughs> organization. And then today we are something like about 25,000 people uh, working in this room. So that's the difference. Originally, we had only one organization called Tumba Equatorial. Rocket Launcher Station. The primary job of that organization was to launch <coughs> borrowed satellites, uh, borrowed rockets like Nike, <coughs> Apache, Sendar, Judy Dot, and that kind of uh, small rockets. The minimum diameter is three inches, and the maximum diameter is uh, 300 millimeter diameter. So <coughs> later it grew into the first thing is Space Science and Technology Center, which much later became Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, today's uh, Space Center. From Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, we got into Sri Harikota, that is Sadish Savan Space Center, today is known as Sadish Savan Space Center. Then you are now Space Application Center, the Satellite Center. Then you have uh, National uh, Remote Sensing, then you have liquid propulsion system centers. So many centers were born. So this is now located in different places, so it has grown into a very big organization. <clears throat> Though we were struggling to make uh, a three inch diameter solid propulsion rocket in the beginning, now we were we are successful almost in making three meter diameter solid propulsion rockets. Actually we are second in the world uh, next to Americans to reach that size of a solid propulsion. That's one important thing. <laughs> About the liquid propulsion, I started my career with Dr. Kalam. And we were working on the payload integration. Um, from physical research laboratories, some scientists will come, Professor Dr. Bowser, Sati Prakash, Gopi and Kala. And so on and so forth. These people, they were trying to study in the higher atmosphere. So they have some uh, transponders, so many experiments. So our job in Kalam's group was to integrate the payload with the rocket and launch it. And we were not fully occupied. We had a lot of spare time. And a uh, lot of fun also. I don't want to go deeply into the fun part of it because we will do it another time. <laughs> But we had uh, actually basically we found out the difference between, uh, at, least at least I found out the difference between the fundamental science subjects and engineering subjects. <laughs> what is obvious to an engineer is not that easily obvious to a uh, pure science uh, person. So we used to have some uh, pick up some kind of, I don't know what to call it as quarrels, but arguments. And then uh, finally we learned how to live with the uh, pure science people. So <laughs> <laughs> that is how it, uh, it got on. Now in that process, I was really fed up. In the sense I couldn't uh, spend all my time meaningfully. Kalam also, he was also trying to become somebody to do something. But Kalam was trying to do something on the solid propulsion. So we, he was trying to do some clean diameter rocket duplicating the Judy Dot. <coughs> Judy Dot is an American rocket using uh, the launch copper chaff uh, in the upper atmosphere. And uh, one which carried is a Judy. The Judy is three inch diameter. 
But today we have 125 tons of propellant in one stage. That is influence. There is a massive string which is used for GSLV boosters. But that range also we were struggling. So we used to uh, do some <coughs> testing of this range diameter. We had our own propellants. We call it as propellants. And then fill up the whole thing and then take it to the so-called very hills. There's a remote area where many people are not, you know, allowed to go. <coughs> Today it is filled with uh, all beautiful buildings and all. But I'm talking about 50, 60 years back. We were trying to take it there. One man will carry the battery, another man will carry the cable, and third man with a big distance will carry the so-called 5 kg propellant in the van. Then we fill up everything and then fire. Then the next thing is there will be a sound. It will explode. <laughs> <laughs> then we come back in the same procession. Originally we were, I was very curious, you know, to understand, and then I would be the first man to run, etc. As a young boy, I was very interested. But after so many explosions, you lost interest. Came <laughs> <laughs> back. Next question I used to ask is, which was a failure? And then or Brahman which side failed first? We, we used to ask them. That was a routine thing. So we never had any hope that we will succeed in that. But started working, how the hell this can be made to work? Somewhere we have to do something. So that is our starting point. Then what we did was, we wanted to use one of the existing propellant, that is what is called ASUG propellant which is called a car-like paste, double-based component from Aramanga. The defense people, they had uh, their factory. Aramanga is a small village near Oti. And then we transported that propellant. And the propellant was a proven one, but a very low specific number. We were successful in that. Then there was another propellant plant, which is called PVC propellant. See, this oil propellant is nothing but you have uh, fuel and a bike. <coughs> you take the binder, it can be polybutylene, polysulfide, polyvinyl chloride. You know, anything, whatever you have, which can be used as a binder, you mix it and then cast it into the shape of what we call it as in Kerala as a putt. You know, it is a dish morning breakfast. In some houses, we used to have the dosa, idli, and put it somewhere. So that way, we make it, and then the putt will be loaded into the aluminum alloy tube and then we used to fire. So we became a load technology borrowed from the Sud aviation of France, so which helped us in making the <coughs> PVC propellants. With those PVC propellants, we started doing the uh, 3 inch and then 300 millimeter, then 560 millimeter. Then eventually we boasted to 1 meter diameter. <coughs> that is what is called SLV3. That SLV3, that Base one was used many times successfully, which is used in the project called ASLV also. Of course, ASLV was having initial problems in the beginning. So, in the local parlance, ASLV. SLV is nothing but satellite launch vehicle. ASLV is augmented satellite launch vehicle. This augmented satellite launch vehicle, they named it as always sea loving vehicle. <laughs> so, which was, uh, so those days, then of course that gave birth to the PSLV, then it gave birth to the GSLV. PSLV is polar satellite launch vehicle, then GSLV is geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle. To make a long story short, when Dr. Sarabhai was there, he gave the full freedom to all of us, to whatever is your innovative ideas, he will give you free. He will give you funding. So you are free to do what you want. And he went and recruited some many number of PhDs from USA. <coughs> and those PhDs who came from USA, for them it was possible. Because the, only one church building and uh, there is a bishop house and there is a school building. 
These are the only three buildings available in the entire area. You don't have anything else. So what we did was, the church building was converted into the primary lab. So where we put some partitions and all. And you can see the flying doves and so on and so forth. Morning we all have a gathering for a tea. At 10 o'clock the tea will come. So everybody will stand in it. Just out there. there. So this PhDs were thinking and competing with each other. It is not necessary that you should be a chemical person to do propellant. Anybody can do propellant. And anybody can do propellant. Anybody can do avionics. This was a chaos going on. In fact, uh, I remember Professor Blamont. He used to be a consultant for uh, this one. He gave a free, he went on a free tour. And then he gave uh, very primary advice to Dr. Sarabhai. He said, he drew a square. He said, the only advice I can give you is that Sarabhai is make sure none of these fellows come out of this square. <laughs> Keep them inside the square and then try to get the best out. So actually everybody was in the learning mode. But Sarama used to be a terror in Tamagaraji. Here he used to be a very flexible person talking to everybody. In fact, the very first meeting of Dr. Sarama I, I had with was, I was designing have an explosive bolt. It's nothing but a bolt which has a groove which is loaded with a charge. So when you fire, it will break into two pieces. So he, he came, I, I never have seen Sarabai. So he came and sat in front of me. I was just looking at him, looks like a Hindi film star. <laughs> very fair and very nice looking. He sat there, without any permission and all, he sat there, which irritated me because I didn't know who the hell he is. <laughs> <laughs> he started asking, uh, may I know what you are doing? I like the word may I know. So he's very polite. So I said, I am doing an explosive board. How long will it take this? A couple of days. Is that so quick? I said, yes, that's all it needed. But then behind him, I saw Kalam and Murthy, they were showing me a signal saying that <laughs> I could not understand what they mean. Are they saying something like that? Some signal is coming. So I was just looking at them and uh, I never got up anyway. So, so Sarabha said, I will extend look at this. Then I asked him, may I know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this person should have told me I am Vikram Sarabhai. But he didn't say, they call me Vikram. <laughs> <laughs> I did ask him the question, but I wanted to ask him, who the hell is Vikram? <laughs> I did not go in the he left and Kalam came. Hey, he didn't know if these Vikram Sarabhai. Why? <laughs> <laughs> that is how the first meeting was. Then of course he became so close and then he monitored what was happening to the explosive board. <coughs> this explosive board we used in a payload recovery. When we were not even having a three diameter rocket, we had the audacity to Recover the payload, which Elon Musk has borrowed, not from us, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is doing the recovery and uh, reusability, etc. But this happened 55, 56 years back. Please understand this. So innovative ideas were very much welcome. So after Sarabhai passed away, he died December 30th, 1971. And then Professor Sarishtha took over. He is the one who actually did the blueprint of what he supposed to do. And he brought in Dr. Brahmakash from Tamil He's another giant. He ruthlessly followed Brahman's direction and put everybody into their box. 
this was not an expected one for these people, so they had some lot of struggles. They were finding it very difficult when they didn't have the freedom to work. And the problem with many of the PhDs were, and we don't even since we can't anybody here <laughs> sitting here as the many PhDs were having the problem is that they have specialized in super specialization. So they were focusing their attention on close areas. So when it comes to applied research, there was some kind of a problem. Then Sarabhai's demise was totally unexpected. He died. The previous day night he was talking to other people up to night time o'clock. Next day morning they found him dead. And nobody knows really what's the cause of the death. Then Professor Sadish Lavan, he drew the blueprint of the entire organization, which he did very successfully from 1971 to something like about 11 years. Then 1982 to 1993, it was Professor Yuala's period, he executed those blueprints ruthlessly. And that is a period where SMB was perfected. Of course, Darwin's period was perfected. Then it came PSLV, then GSLV, etc., etc. These are the three architects of his own who were the real giants, who did everything what is for his today. And I think we owe a lot to these three gentlemen. And three centers are named after them, in terms of my space center, Sadish Dawn space center, and your house center. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, uh, London and then uh, uh, Maru Nair and then so many people came. So the growth of ISRO from a three diameter rocket to that of a giant JCP. In a, long, a short story, this is how it is to grow up. And uh, today we were, or we are in a situation of uh, launching geosynchronous satellites up to the weight of something close to 3.2 or 3.4 <coughs> tons weight. No, our aim was to have a four, four, four ton. I don't think that we have achieved the four ton. <coughs> now we are working on <coughs> enhancing this capability from four tons to five, six tons. Now, in, in a different language, when we look at it, uh, of course, for commercial launches of uh, launch vehicles, four tons with your capability, you can make launches compatible as well as cost effective and uh, it can be a profit making organization. But it is a limited scope and limited field and uh, competition is heavy. You keep away the Russians and the Chinese from the field. You are having the Aryan as well as in uh, American NASA. Now NASA for some reason went all the way up to Landing man on the moon and then afterwards it withdrew from the whole thing. Now it's now being ruled by Elon Musk and he's trying to do the recovery for that. Now we are struggling on one hand to go up, upright. And the Americans are trying to do something on a commercial basis with a lot of private parties in the future. And Chinese, they, we don't know what the hell they are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Russians are struggling, but unfortunately they were thrown into pieces. So we got into the Russian contract at that time when uh, Russia was shattering into small, small countries. Our cryogenic uh, contract with Russians could not succeed because the Americans interfered there and said that we don't want this contract to continue. As they told the reason that uh, with that technology you will be making missiles. And unfortunately, there is not even a single missile in the world which uses cryogenic technology. <laughs> but because it is Americans are saying that, it became the truth. So <laughs> it, it went on like that. That uh, broke the, uh, what do you call the cryogenic contract. But prior to that, 
I was instrumental in making the uh, Vikas Center. So when one hand, when Kalam was trying to make the solid rockets, another hand, I was trying to make the liquid rockets, but we never had any meaningful liquid rocket other than some control rockets using annealing nitric acid. The cheapest and the lowest specific impulse. Specific impulse is the energy content index of the properties. So we were using that. Then xylidine, you know, actually we were trying to use anything available in the liquid form to see whether they can be used as a fuel and then not laser. But unfortunately we were not succeeding in that. Then came the nitric acid and unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. And the world was moving. Incidentally, it is interesting to note the so-called V2 rocket. The V2 rocket was some kind of a uh, big rocket used. Uh, actually, it was proposed by Hitler to use it in against the Allies in the in the World War. And unfortunately, that rocket, though it was one of the best systematically designed and developed, which I saw. Myself in Pinamute. But unfortunately, that lacked the guidance system. So it couldn't land where it is expected to land. It was landing all over. And that is where the in their world war went against Hitler. So that V2 rocket was the first liquid rocket which was used in that year. Now that one was used but by the Americans as well as by the Russians. In fact, the question at that time was, whose German were superior? Whether the American Germans or the Russian Germans? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is how the whole thing went. So I had an opportunity to visit those places, like uh, Pena Munde and Jurembarg and then uh, Dr. Muller and then Van Braun, considered to be the father of the etc. I had developed a fascination for it. So I wanted to do it, but uh, Many people, you know, while they are struggling to make the solids, they have no time to think that the liquid can be made. I use that opportunity saying that you guys struggle, continue to struggle, I will struggle in another area, see whether that can be made meaningful. So I made a 600 millimeter, 600 kg thrust liquid rocket, flew it successfully. Of course, they said it was a failure. Then I said, why are you saying? Because we didn't see any flame in the rocket. I said, it was there, I saw it. No, 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 you saw it, but we didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> then I found out the reason saying that because sunlight was on the face and there was no instrument in the rocket. And radar was also not working because that's all we have. So next time I said, we will launch it in such a manner so that you see. So what is that? How can you make it? So, night. So in the and that should be cloudless night, because you know you have the cloud as your excuse. <laughs> so we made that, and for heaven's sake, it went beautifully well. So, in fact, I even suspected the first one could be a failure, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the second one was a very good success. Then I made my claim that it is okay, then let us go to a 3 -ton. You know, how 3 -ton came in the picture, was there was a SAM missile, SAM-7 missile they got it. It is a surface to air missile. Which the uh, defense were using it. But they were not able to duplicate the SAM missile sustained, namely the liquid rocket. So I felt it is easy to duplicate. And first time I learned, it is more difficult to duplicate a thing rather than making something for the <laughs> So that, that is a very situation. We miserably failed in duplicating. And I learned for the first time combined beating and vortex, all kinds of uh, problems, Pogo was rushing. I mean, it later became our good knowledge. But at that time, everything was a you know, nightmare. And there was no support, there was no funding, there was no project, there was no project people, so you are struggling alone. And you were being chased away from every place. So in a place called Tumba, it is getting overwhelmingly occupied by the solid people. So you didn't have a place to work. 
Wherever you go, they will find safety as a reason. This is very interesting. You know, quality and safety, these are two aspects which people can use it to their advantage. Very <laughs> nicely. So they use this word, and then I was given to Srihirikota. Srihirikota was born just like that. The maximum number of vehicles it had was one car and one jeep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, distances you have to travel four or five kilometers. It's 35,000 acres. And in fact, you don't know when you land into some area, you don't know how to come back. There is no, there's no road available. So, in that one, we were struggling. I wanted to prove the three times somehow. So, we struggled for one week in the hard sand. So, made everything, and there is a built in test stand, and in that, we tried to fire. And the test stand was loaded with the rocket. And you saw, must have seen in the movie. So we were, I was walking away from the test plant. There was a control center which didn't have a communication system because we didn't have anything. I could hear the countdown alone. So we were walking away from the test plant. As we were walking, I knew the mistake I had made. I didn't make any compensation for the calibration which we used to see water. It's not the sea water, the fountain water from there in the that had very fine sand particles which could have deposited in the filter, which will change the C D. Which means yeah, we are going to have a hard start. Which means it is going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> if it is going to explode, then I am sunk. I have no means to stop it. Nothing can be done. See, it's a silent spectator <coughs> anticipating an explosion and watching the whole fight. <laughs> I watched it. It explodes. <laughs> <laughs> now, what to do? I didn't utter a single word. I knew everything. What is the mistake I have done? I didn't discuss it with anyone. Got in the vehicle, came back to Chennai. <coughs> Decided that I will not struggle like this anymore. There's no point in struggling. Luckily, I saw the two Dronacharyas sitting there, Professor Dravan, as well as Dr. Dravan. In the reception, I was very happy. It was very difficult to get both of them together. <laughs> so I got them, so I went there. Sunburnt skin of mine with bright color, reddish. I went there and I struggled some in the paper, my resignation letter, very short. I came to Professor Daman and I said that I am leaving. I exploded a rocket. <laughs> I am responsible for it. Whatever is the conversation you want to take it from my salary, please go ahead. Now that's it. Just walked out of the room. These two people were just looking at me. Then he called me and then said, sit down. What is that you want? Then I told him the story in a brief language. He said, I can suggest this one. Go and sleep. We <laughs> will <laughs> discuss this matter. I said, hey, hey boy. So next day morning, he said, what is your problem? What do you want? I said, I want manpower, I want people, I want funding, I want facilities, everything. Nothing is available. He said, I can't give you anything because we are struggling to get the solid markets. You are daydreaming on your liquid ones. No one will do. Please understand my situation. I cannot. I cannot go to the government and ask for money. For the first time I started thinking, he what the government says is true. Then he said, very interestingly, I will not give you money. Accepting that, if you can do anything, I am okay. <laughs> what do you do without money? All right. I get, I had during one of my visits, I had you know, frequently we used to visit the aerospace centers. When I was in Princeton, I visited uh, almost all the aerospace centers you can think of. A police border company, like a chemical depression, and uh, aerospace center, etc. etc. And in France also, capital, all the facilities, and UK, etc. In the conversation, the French fellows were also struggling to make uh, forward their movement in the 
they had what is called the L70, one, one engine, which is a pressure fed engine, not using turbo pump. Um, so they said, they were thinking, trying to cook us down, whether we are interested in any collaboration. So that's <coughs> they may be interested in collaboration, can we go ahead? He said, I understand what you are telling, but I also suspect that you have already discussed something with them. Can you tell me what is your discussion? I said, yes sir, I discussed with them and I am willing to have any collaboration. Without spending money, we can try to sell our manpower, their services to them, and then in return we can get a posting in their place. Anyway, to make a long story short, it was a barter deal. In the barter deal, we were going for 100 man years to work with them. And so it was a joint development. But at that time, they didn't have this turbo pump system. They had a very small engine, what is called M40. So we, developed it. we took next four years and we got into the system. That is how the Vikas engine was born. But the engine was born and there is nothing forward afterwards. At that time, Sargul continued in solid, but they were making something progress on it. So that story continued. We had a lot of help with the Vegas engine. And incidentally, you know, it's something like this, you know, you don't have a place to live, you don't have anything to say, but you can always dream of building a bungalow, big house, you know, all kinds of God and landscaping, you are going to discuss about it. Like we were trying to do the, recall, how to recover the payload. So I said, and Vikram Sarabhai died in the year 1971, and he was my mentor, and I was very grateful to him. So I felt he should be this thing, Vikas should be nameless, because actually to everybody I said Vikas, the, the, the. But it is Vikram, V A K A Sarabhai. So this was the first name Vikas in the world. Before Vikram's uh, space center was born, before Chandrayaan carried the Vikas rope closer, Vikram named it silently the name of Vikram Sarabhai for this year. Now it has reached a stage where the Vikas engine is successfully used for more than 54, 55 flights of KSLV, GSLV put together without a single failure. And uh, <coughs> The solids, of course, it has grown its uh, ultimate level, which is okay. And in the cryogenic, it met with an accidental spike case. And uh, the, of course, it took a lot of time to make the cryogenic. <coughs> now we are struggling to have programs which will mean Daganyan, Mangalyan, etc. <coughs> so this is the short and long story of what you must the question. <laughs> I am not sure about some of the words which I use, which you are not familiar with, I think. So specific in what is like boosters, etc. But I am assuming that um, basically you are all very intelligent people working in various areas. So if you don't know even the names, you will find out in no time what it means to you as an engineer or uh, a scientist. Okay now. Now we can start the interactive session. <laughs> yes, please.